It's another episode of Social Distancing at the Chamber, as always with our CEO, Glenn Hammer, for a little segment we call Happy Hour with Hammer. Glenn, we have returning guest, Courtney Coolidge, but a special guest panelist tonight. Why don't you introduce her? Well, we are thrilled to have Katie Fisher with us. Uh, proud uh, for us, very, very, we're very proud that she was a chamber alum, started as a legal uh, fellow and just uh, rocketed and uh, headed up our legislative affairs. And for the last uh, number of years, she's the governor's top person down at the state capitol, Katie Fisher. Katie, and, and if I could say this, I, I may say this, and this is true. Probably the person, I've been doing this for a while, some would say too long, probably the person that can get into my mind and think to the extent where I used to say it was, it was such a relief that I was able to put my brain on autopilot when she was at the chamber. That's an unusual thing to say, but it's true. Katie Fisher, welcome to the show. Thank you, Glenn. That's a very kind introduction and kind of you to retroactively call me a legal fellow. I think I was just a broke law student looking for some kind of opportunity. At it, was it was paid. <laughs> it was paid. It was paid. That's right. Good enough. Happy to be here. Very happy to be here. All right, Katie. We're going to talk about a couple things. Uh, your, uh, your friend and colleague, Courtney's going to talk about some survey data that she got back from the business community, but why don't we start with you? You'll go in segment one, Katie. Creativity in the retail space. The governor today at a press conference announced a thawing out of our retail sector. Beginning May 4th, we're going to allow some limited uh, service for our retail sector beyond those who are already designated essential. We're going to allow for appointment-based service, curbside. And then on May 8th, we're gonna open it up a little wider, but we're still gonna be sure we're practicing social distancing in accordance with CDC guidelines. But you have a retail story that really gets to the uh, um, creative nature of some of these folks in that sector. So tell us what it's like to go dress shopping in the age of the pandemic. <laughs> Thank you, Garrett. Yeah, as you mentioned, you know, a number of our retailers have been open uh, through the, the stay-at-home order because they sell food or other products that are considered essential. And they've been very responsible. Everyone that has gone to Costco or Trader Joe's um, has noticed that it doesn't look the same. Occupancy is down. You know, they'll give you hand sanitizer on your way in. They're wiping down the carts. So they've been incredibly responsible. But other retailers have been incredibly creative. And if you think a pandemic is stressful, try being a bride in a pandemic, <laughs> trying to bring all of the details of your special day together. Um, I got engaged on New Year's Eve. We have a wedding date set for November of this year. And just before um, things got crazy with the pandemic, I had been wedding dress shopping uh, in the usual sense, going into a bridal boutique, um, picking out dresses, trying them on. I had my mom with me, and nothing really felt right through that experience. Um, we, we didn't find quite the right dress. And then um, everything hit, and everything started to close. And I had scheduled bridal appointments um, at some shops here in town, and of course they were all canceled. And so I, we've been a little busy at the office, so I hadn't had a lot of time to think about it. But among the things that were keeping me up at night and waking me up in a cold sweat were, what, you know, what am I gonna do about this dress? How am I gonna get a dress? And so I started looking around online to see if any of the bridal shops had really come up with any creative way um, to, to access brides and to talk to them during this pandemic. And I found an incredible shop out of Tucson called J Bridal Boutique. It's in uh, the northern part of Tucson at Skyline and Campbell. Um, I don't live in Tucson, I live in Phoenix. <laughs> I'm very lucky to have family in Tucson who actually have a guest house, an unoccupied guest house um, that they were kind enough to let me use. So the process went like this. I made an appointment through their website and the owner contacted me immediately on my cell phone. We were texting back and forth for a few days. I was sending her screenshots of things that I saw on Instagram that I liked, dresses that I had seen um, on their website. 
and other dresses that I had tried on at other shops. And she started to kind of get a picture of what I was looking for. We drove down to Tucson, my mom and I did, on Saturday, and um, went straight to our family's guest house. And I had a virtual appointment via FaceTime with the shop owner. She was in the shop, I was at home. Um, she walked me through the store, showed me some of the dresses that she had picked out, that I had sent her or that she thought might be consistent with my style. And we picked out uh, about five or six dresses. She then sanitized all the dresses, put them in individually wrapped plastic bags, um, and drove them over to the house, left them on the doorstep. And the really special part was she sent a box along with it. And anyone who's tried on wedding dresses knows that there's one sample size. They don't have an array of sizes for you to try on. There's one size and you have to make it work and try and figure out what it might look like on you in your size. And they have these very special clips that they use to kind of make it, show you what it would look like after it's been ordered in your size and altered. She sent a bag of the clips and sent me a video, texted me a video about how to use them that we watched while we waited for her to drive the dresses over. <laughs> Um, she sent a tape measure so that I could take my own measurements and figure out the proper size. She sent a bottle of champagne wow. and a special sign um, that said I said yes to the dress so that I could take a photo for their social media if I found a dress. And the experience was amazing. It was so fun. We had as much time as we needed. No one was trying to sell me on anything. I can't tell you how many stories I've heard of brides who feel like they got convinced that they should get a dress that they didn't really love. We had so much time to just kind of go back and forth between dresses, sit down, walk around, take a champagne break when we needed it. Um, and then we ended up finding a dress. I found one that I really loved. Um, so I texted her, we got the order all together. And then I packed up all the dresses back in their plastic packed up the box of things that she had sent, left it outside, and she came by and picked it up again. So all in all, it was a really fun experience. And I was just blown away by the creativity. Um, and it was completely contactless. You know, I didn't have to come in contact with any other human being other than my mom who lives nearby me. And so we've been sheltering in place together throughout this anyways. Um, so I, I didn't have to do anything that made me feel uncomfortable. My mom didn't feel uncomfortable and we were still able to have a simple day. Wow. Take that Kleinfeld. That's great. <laughs> All right. I love it. Glenn, I know you love stories of creative business people. Well, it's, it, that's, that's one of the best I've, I've heard during this pandemic. And it reminds me, Katie, you know, when you were at the chamber, there was nothing even, you know, one percent as stressful and difficult as, as this time but you're a rock so I'm, I'm just thankful you're at the governor's office right now running point at the legislature because if if you're if there was going to be a picture of a person next to unflappable it would be you and this is this is a great it's not just a great story about uh this entrepreneurial business it's all it's also says a lot about you how you adjust it and you'll you'll have a great dress and you're gonna have a you know a beautiful wedding i love the story so i appreciate you sharing it with us thank you glenn katie you're heroic is what glenn is saying <laughs> <laughs> all right stick with us for segment two katie because courtney's going to talk about a survey that we've been doing across the business community and what we've learned Courtney, there's a little angst out there. Hopefully the governor's uh, press conference today is a little ray of hope. What, what have you found out? Yeah, I actually think Katie's story is a good segue <laughs> into some of the governor's actions, right? He, he's been working with industries across the state and knows that there's not a one size fits all approach. Each industry is innovative, they can adapt, they're complying with CDC guidelines. Um, and we've seen a lot of that come out of businesses. Uh, so we have been partnering with some other uh, business organizations across the state. We've been convening weekly uh, to touch base on issues related to the pandemic. We recently conducted a survey of over 400 businesses uh, and got really interesting results. Um, 
you know, businesses want to work, but there, there is some angst, Eric, like you said, they're, they're scared of some of the liability issues that are out there. Um, their biggest issue right now is liquidity and cash flow, which is why some of the federal programs, uh, getting funding to those are such a big deal. Um, and yeah, that's, that's kind of the high level highlights. We can get into more of the details too. Yeah. How many groups were part of the submission? Yeah, so uh, 22 groups uh, sent this out through their memberships um, to get data back and signed on to some of these recommendations. Um, you know, I think as business, we all agree with the governor's course of action. We need to restart the economy, but we need to prioritize public health. So what's going to hurt more if we reopen too quickly and have to shut down again, or should we do a phased in approach? And I think those agree we should do a phased in approach. Yeah, it's, uh, it was an insightful stuff. And I thought today's press conference was really indicative of a desire to reopen this economy, but do so responsibly, safely, prudently. Um, <clears throat> Katie, something that we heard from the governor today is that stay tuned for more news on dine-in options. You're working closely with industry and we expect something probably next week, further guidance on that? That's exactly right, Kara. We are gonna work very closely with the restaurant industry, many of whom have shifted their entire business model. They've been incredibly creative, much like the bridal boutique in Tucson. <laughs> they figured out how to shift their whole business model to carry out, to take out. And so it's gonna take time for them to shift back and figure out the what, right way to do that and the right balance. And so we wanna work closely with them to restore confidence um in our economy again and to make sure that they have enough time and enough input uh to so that they can implement the guidance with fidelity yeah yeah oh, oh no, no no please i would say uh you know while each one of these 22 organizations are uh, have their own priorities and are so niche there were some things we could rally around and it's ex exactly what katie referenced there is business innovation we need guidance we, we don't want, um, you know, unflexible mandates. Um, business can be innovative, they can be creative, and they can protect, protect they can safely protect their customers and employees, um, which is another recommendation was that we need some liability protections for these businesses. So while all these industries have their own needs during the pandemic, there's definitely some that we can all rally around. What I, what I like about it also is it's also important just to constantly restate is that a lot of the economy is open. So, you know, manufacturing, construction, areas that are still pretty much closed in the state I was born in, New York, have been open here and, and operating safely. And activities uh, like golf that you could socially distance have been uh, open here. And in fact, New York just recently said that they were going to open up golf uh, so that, you know, their citizens could get uh, some, some fresh air. Uh, I, I thought, you know, a few weeks ago when the governor said elective surgeries would be the first one to go forward because we now have the capacity so we could improve the health of our people as well as the health of our health, the financial health of our hospital system. That was really important. And, you know, the retail uh, 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 comments today, I thought were really important and timely. I mean, we're, we're quickly uh, approaching Mother's Day and to breathe some oxygen into our smaller retailers where they could engage in some additional commerce safely, makes sense, with restaurants on deck. And Katie and others have said, you know, they've been extremely innovative. We've enjoyed it at the Hammer household having takeout. And, uh, you know, I'm sure working with Steve Chukri and the Arizona Restaurant Association, we'll get some good protocols to breathe some more oxygen. But, you know, one of the things that I feel very strongly about let's continue to make progress. And we definitely took a step forward today safely. What we don't wanna see is there to be pressure to take two steps forward and we take 10 backwards. That's not gonna serve anyone well. Well said, Glenn. Katie agrees. <laughs> this officially counts as a media appearance. So we're not gonna put her on the spot with hard questions. <laughs> no, I think it was well said. I mean, and it's, uh, you're exactly right. Hospitals have increased their bed capacity. 
They have, you know, worked so diligently to get access to more PPE. They've worked with us and with the state to get additional ventilators. And so they were able to safely restore elective surgeries. Uh, retailers have, as we've talked about, behaved so responsibly, implemented really innovative new protocols. Um, and restaurants have been incredibly innovative and creative too. And so as long as everyone has can continue to be responsible and everybody wants to be responsible, Arizonans, you know, they want to do the right thing. We will continue to provide guidance to allow them to safely do that. And one of the things the governor said today, I thought was really important, the consumer confidence. You know, the, 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 the government could help by setting good rules of the road, but we want to get the public uh, fully engaged and fully engaged because the data supports being fully engaged. And that's, and that's what I really uh, appreciate so much about the approach of this administration. And I'll just say, you know, uh, Sandra Watson and the team, they reached out to every group, small, medium, and large, every part of the economy. I know that there were hundreds of submissions, including, including ours, and that's always appreciated, that there's, a, there, there's good, constant, productive communication going on uh, between the business community and the administration. Thank you, Len. All right, Courtney, that about does it. Yeah, Glenn wrapped it up nicely. I think I think we can say it best, or the governor has said it best. We are all in this together, and work together. We will return stronger. All right. Back. Well, <laughs> Katie, thanks for doing this. Uh, we know that you were a user of the Postmates app like five years ago, so your life probably <laughs> hasn't changed that much. So <laughs> glad to have you on here. Uh, all the best for a fantastic wedding later this year. We know it's going to be. Uh, we will be uh, spaced out appropriately within six feet at least. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure well, it'll be a safe and healthy occasion. Thank you, Garrick. I really appreciate the chance to to share my story with you all. And yeah, stay healthy, stay connected. Um, continue to use Postmates and DoorDash. And if you know any brides, Jay Bridal in Tucson. All right. This is the place right. to it. Um, I love it. Not, not a chamber member, but we're going to work on it. <laughs> it might be now. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody. We will see you on the next episode. Bye, guys. Bye.